Today, we're going to be talking about the state of the crypto market. I'm the altcoin analyst. Nothing here is financial advice. Let's dive in. One of you guys recommended we talk about Crypto Night or Sailor, which is a small market cap project on SEI. Now, I'm very bullish on DeFi and RWAs and kind of anything in that realm. I think there's going to be a tremendous wave of capital coming into that narrative in the next bull run. And Sailor, I thought, was a great project. We covered it in a video I made on the top three crypto income strategies, where one of the strategies was finding low cap altcoins. Sailor just happened to be one that we talked about. We'll kind of go over it again because I think there's some interesting things to point out here. It's trading at around a $30 million market cap. So before you guys go aping into this project, I want to remind you guys of my strategy when getting into low cap altcoins. So I pretty much said, careful out there. It's a great project, but I'm not buying right now. Later in the video, that's exactly what I said. And so I haven't bought any of these yet. I mean, they, they may be good projects, but if we go back to Crypto Night Sailor, when I mentioned it, it was at a $30 million market cap. It is now at a $15 million market cap. I'm in the game of making money. If I would have bought, or if I would have told you guys to buy, you guys would have been pretty angry because you would have lost half your money of what you put in. And so I'm still not buying. Sailor is a great project. I don't DCA altcoins. DCAing altcoins is a terrible idea. The longer you're in the space, the more you begin to understand this market. Now is not the time to buy altcoins. Not yet. The time will come. Now is not the time to be buying altcoins. Crypto Night Sailor is a great project. I said it before. SCI liquid staking. Anything DeFi related, trading, lending, borrowing, liquid staking, anything along the lines of decentralized finance, I'm bullish on. Careful out there for the person who recommended Sailor. It's a great project. I'm still not buying. I, I think it could potentially go lower. The next thing I want to discuss is this scenario I talked about for Bitcoin. Now, I tweeted this out. So if you guys aren't following me on Twitter, drop me a follow. If the top isn't in, I think a fractal like this could potentially play out leading into the halving because that's the next bullish event that's coming up for crypto. And it's only a few months away. The supply shock, I think, still is going to have an impact on the price of Bitcoin, but it's just going to take longer to realize that supply shock. I ultimately think we're coming back down a lot lower. I think there's too many people pretty bullish out there. And so I thought this fractal was pretty interesting. It was pretty steep. So if we go into recession, kind of in Q2, Q3, maybe, I think we could probably see something like that. And so it's just an idea. Like I said, I called the top, but if the top isn't in, I'm okay to be wrong. But I think it's possible we can see something like that. But you have to understand in any move of Bitcoin or crypto, bulls and bears get wrecked. It's just the nature of the crypto market. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is I keep bringing up past videos because they age very well because I know what I'm talking about. So, <laughs> all right. Anyway, this part of the video right here. I was referring to a hammer candle and a hammer candle right here. And so this video was done last week. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because people were saying that since that hammer candle would close, we were going to rally 20, 30% after that. And I said, I doubt it. But if you're listening to influencers that are peddling that, it looks sensical looking at the market, looking at the chart. But I said, it's probably not likely to play out. That could play out. I just think it's probably unlikely that we go to 55,000 next week. Um, but again, anything's possible. Uh, I, I think that's probably something being peddled by very popular influencers to kind of FOMO you guys into the market and to ultimately get you wrecked. Um, and it's a it's a definitely a good selling point. I, I mean, I could see it. You know, it makes sense. Hammer candle, 30 percent gain. We're going to 55K next week. A, so like I said, we can look at the chart here and we will point out that exact same scenario. Hammer candle, which means that there's a long candle body and a short candle wick. This is a bullish candle, very bullish. It indicates a lot of buying down here. And so if you're a trader, which I'm not, but I mean, I have traded, but this channel isn't about trading. This is generally a signal to take a long. You pair it with other metrics to understand where to open positions. And so when you see a hammer candle like that, 
generally you're looking to open longs. And if you did that over here, 30% gain. Pretty nice. 27, 28. And so that was the narrative being peddled here. Hammer candle. Although it ended up not closing super bullish, there's still a little body. There's still like a little wick at the top. But it's definitely a bullish looking candle. Therefore, we were going to see a 30% rally. Which would be put us at 55k. That ended up not happening, and I pretty and I was pretty clear that it was just a narrative to get everyone excited and to FOMO you into the market to ultimately get you wrecked. These other influencers use you as exit liquidity. And the sooner you guys know that, the better off you're gonna be. Because it's just that narrative, just a load of <laughs> We're, we'll, <laughs> well, we're clearly not at 55K, and I highly doubt, I highly doubt that the candle tomorrow, because today is Saturday, that the candle tomorrow is going to put us at 55K. I highly doubt it. Let's zoom into the daily to see if we can understand where the price of Bitcoin might actually be going. When you're looking at the chart, the first thing you should do is start marking out levels. Now, levels are very easy to mark out because it's simply just lining up where a level was touched the most. I know it sounds kind of dumb, but it's actually how traders trade. It's your SR levels, support and resistance. And so the more touches, the higher area of interest it has to me. And so we'll mark out all these levels here. To ultimately see if we can see where Bitcoin might go. Now, I was pretty clear that I thought we could go up to the 44, maybe even 46K, because 46 would be up here, before ultimately kind of getting rejected and coming down. I was very clear that I thought this was the top for a few reasons, but one notably would be the spot Bitcoin ETF. And we've ended up coming back down here to support. So just looking at, from a basic understanding of just general trends, this would look like a high this would look like a low this would look like a lower high and i think we can get a confirmation of a downtrend if we end up breaking below 38. now that sounds very bearish and i know but ultimately i don't think it's playing out tomorrow we could spend some more time down here just kind of chopping around maybe come back up but ultimately, I think if we're going to confirm that we are going to go into more of a downtrend, we're going to need to see a break of this level. And when we do, because I think we will, altcoins will get smashed. Sailor that we just talked about will probably see another 50% haircut if we end up coming back down here. I'll get really bullish on that token at a $3 million market cap, but not before. I did a video on Elliott Wave Theory where I said I wasn't an expert, and I think Alessio is probably the best expert on Elliott Wave Theory on crypto YouTube, or just kind of trading in general. But I think we're in a corrective ABC wave. And so generally after your expansion, you correct, because markets go up and they go down. And so when they go down, they go down in a fashion called A, B, C. Your C has to break below A, and your B has to be lower than the peak. And so Elliott Wave Theory, I think, is actually becoming pretty fascinating to me as you begin to understand the markets more and see how closely it actually lines up. And so this is another reason why I think we're in a corrective ABC is because we've had our peak right here. To me, this looks like a peak. And the reason I say that is because on a higher time frame, I've drawn out where we have our one, two, three, four, five, and then we need a corrective ABC. Within each impulse, we also see something like this. So I think it'll go something like kind of our one, two, three, four, five. And so this ABC, I think, is in line with that. Now, I think this ABC could potentially be in a larger ABC corrective pattern where we kind of have our A, we come up here to our B, and then we come down here to our C. I think this C could potentially be our bottom where we see that kind of chop 
Maybe we put in a spring, come back down before we end up going into that next bull run. And so I'll be buying altcoins kind of down here. But I think Elliott Wave Theory has become a lot more interesting to me recently. And so just kind of in that Elliott Wave structure, I think we're in that ABC correction. It'll be interesting to see if it plays out. And so the other thing I want to talk about is the tether dominance. That's right. I have been calling this basically since the inception of the channel, where every time we come down to this level right here, Bitcoin ends up correcting quite a bit. And it, it's mainly because the tether dominance and Bitcoin are inversely correlated. So if we overlay Bitcoin here, we can see that every time Bitcoin goes up, the tether dominance goes down. And it's, I think, a very cool chart because nothing is really 100% inversely correlated except Bitcoin to tether dominance. So that's why I find this chart so interesting because every time, and we'll remove this, every time we've come down here, Bitcoin has been in a substantial downtrend as tether dominance goes to range highs. And so this is another tweet I tweeted about where I think we're coming up. And if we if we just kind of look, we always establish this range, this kind of spring that we go off of before going into a, a new range or establishing a new range that we trade in for a while. And then we kind of go off the spring and then we establish a new range. And ultimately, I think as we come back up here, that Bitcoin is going to sell off quite a bit before we kind of consolidate and go spring up. I don't know how high we'll go. I think it's unlikely that we see anything too high for tether dominance, but who knows? Again, they printed 30 billion this past year. And so it'll be interesting to watch this. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.